Trump and I talked to a lot of people and we're trying to understand this border crisis. Senator, Senator there's yeah. some questions for you on Johnson Fentanyl. Sure. The first one, during the Trump administration, the first ter- first year of his term, fentanyl deaths were less than 20,000. By the end of his first term, it was over 50,000. Um, and then I'm, I'm curious, as you've been talking with law enforcement, if you've learned any lessons, if they've told you like something that wasn't done in the Trump administration first term that they should do in the second term. Um, and then my second question, you were, at church the other day, you were talking about compassion for drug users. Yeah. And I'm curious if you see that uh, in any policies. Do you think that people shouldn't be charged for using or Good Samaritan laws? What kind of like policy would you like to see around that? Yeah, so let me try to take the first question first. I mean, look, uh, you did see towards the end of the Trump administration, fentanyl deaths starting to come down, drug overdose started, deaths starting to come down. Yes, there was a spike at the very beginning, but this is what leadership is. is when you see a problem, you try to address it. The problem with Kamala Harris is we've seen this spike. She hasn't done anything to address it. In fact, I think there's a good argument that she's made it worse. You know, on, on compassion for, for drug users, I think we have to remember that, um, look, Drug users are human beings, and they're human beings with a lot to give if they can get clean and actually get things uh, in order. And so I I do think that we have to do better on treatment. We have to do better on giving people the access to sort of detox, because any treatment pathway, it starts with 48 hours, 72 hours of detox, and then it hopefully goes to a longer-term treatment option from there. We were really, really suffering on the early detox side of this, and I think we could do a lot better on ensuring the longer-term treatment options, too. I think we have to empower a a lot of nonprofit organizations, a lot of church groups and so forth to do the on the ground work to help drug addicts get into the path of recovery, but also stay on the path of recovery. And, and I think finally, we have to stop the bleeding. The thing that kills second chances is when fentanyl comes into these communities. You have, you know, a 22-year-old girl who relapses. I see this story in Ohio all the time. She's been clean for two years. She relapses, and that's it. She never gets another opportunity at a second chance. If you have 70,000 Americans dying of fentanyl overdoses every single year, that is the main thing that you have to stop. You have to give people the second chance before they can take advantage of it. Senator, Senator, Senator when you talk to the two union, questions for you. Yeah. So, um, first time... Was Sorry, one, I just want to make sure everybody gets a question. Yeah, yeah. first time... Wanted you to clarify something we sent in our interview yesterday. Are you sure. still planning on being on stage with Tucker Carlson later this month? And then related to the border, how what's the Trump fans' plan to stop um, social media being used for cartel recruitment? Yeah, very very good question. So, so on the first question, yes. Uh, look, I, I believe, agree or disagree with anything that Tucker Carlson or his guests say, we believe in free speech. We believe if you don't like an idea, and obviously, you know, I, 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 the Holocaust was a terrible tragedy. And it's something that we have to make sure never gets repeated again in this country. The best way, I think, to ensure, or sorry, never gets repeated again anywhere in the world, certainly in this country or anywhere else, the best way to ensure that doesn't happen is to debate and push back against bad ideas. It's not to try to censor and suppress them. I really believe that the more you censor ideas instead of fight back against them, the more you give those ideas power. On the second question, um, it was, sorry, remind me. You saying social media for cartel. Yeah, yeah, so, so look. So um, the, the thing on social media is, look, these companies are making billions of dollars, and a lot of them are getting rich by actually facilitating some really, really bad stuff. And we have to stop that. Right? And if you're not willing to use the power of law enforcement to tell these social media companies they have to stop, they have to stop facilitating drug trafficking and sex trafficking, then you're not fit to be a leader of this country. We certainly believe that if the diplomatic, sorry, if the Department of Justice applied appropriate pressure on these social media companies, they could behave a lot better. And if they don't, there's going to be hell to pay. It is ridiculous that you have American businesses facilitating drug trafficking and sex trafficking. It's making these guys' lives harder. We're going to make their lives easier when Donald Trump is president. Senator, when you talk yeah. to the Border Patrol Union, uh, what are the, the topics that, what is the top of the list of the things they would like to see when the Trump administration gets back into the White House? You know, just one, they want to be empowered to do their job, right? They don't want, when, when somebody comes across the border illegally, I think they'd like to be able to send them back instead of have to processing them and then send them back into the country. They give them an ID, they find these IDs ripped up a couple miles away. They know that a lot of these guys are, are criminals. They know that a lot of them have connections 
to gang gangs. They just want to be able to enforce the law. Now, there are a few things, of course, on top of that, some, a few policy changes, some executive orders I talked about with Manny earlier about this. Number one, re-implement Title 42. The Remain in Mexico policy, it really worked. Number two, re-implement deportations. You've got to be willing to send people back who come across that border illegally. And number three, end the asylum fraud. The basic problem, or, or one of the most fundamental problems, I should say, with our immigration system is Kamala Harris lets people come into this country, claim asylum Asylum and then disappear for 10 or 12 years awaiting a court date, you've got to say, wait in Mexico while we adjudicate your asylum claim. You don't get to come into this country, collect free health care benefits and free housing on American taxpayers' dime, which is what they're doing thanks to Kamala Harris's policies. Anybody else who hasn't asked a question yet?